All right, how's everybody doing? Bouncing from one stream to the another to another here. I was just over on the gaming channel streaming. Wanted to try and get one in on here too. Uh, we'll be doing a private stream tomorrow for our patrons and members. Still working on the time on that one, but I'll announce it later today. <clears throat> good morning, midday, afternoon, and good night, everyone. Yes, I gotta check the. Uh, Check the college football scores here real quick before we get started. Because I kept getting updates from folks during the other game. Or during the other stream. In particular, I'm concerned about the Michigan-Penn State game. Oh, Michigan's winning big now. Looks like uh, they're pulling away a little bit. Hey, hey. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll do a little Q&A. But uh, I've been... Oh, is the, the beta's out, Mr. Beep? Because I checked yesterday and I didn't see it yet. Because um, I checked yesterday for that update. So good to know. Glad to hear that. Um, so um, I thought I'd do it. I've been asking, people have been asking me a lot lately to give them some tips and hints on family history research. So I thought while we did a Q&A about some things, uh, I might do a little bit of research on my own tree, which granted, I found a lot of the easy to find stuff on most of these people, but maybe not a lot of the harder to find stuff. So um, you get to see a little bit of that. Um, ah, Phillies leading three nothing over the Braves. Phillies are looking good right now. How would I do as a soldier? I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure how I would do. Uh, you're doing family research, especially from Ohio. What are some things you do when you hit roadblocks? Uh, I, I usually take a break. If I'm having a hard time with a particular line, I usually take a break and work on another line for a while and maybe come back, back to it a few months down the road. That way I've got fresh eyes and maybe I can think of things that I maybe hadn't seen before. Um, so right now, I'm in the early process. I, I wrote a book last year about the Whitaker family, which is one of my family lines, my grandmother uh, that raised me, my maternal grandmother, her maiden name is Whitaker. So it's her family. Uh, and they came from the area around Tipton uh, in the English West Midlands. So I wrote a book about that family. Uh, I'm in the process now of writing another book about the Greenhill family, which is on my grandfather's side. And so that's a family I've been doing a lot of digging into uh, right now. Um, so yes, I am reading the chat comments. Uh, so this is a family I'm researching right now. Joseph Greenhill III is my fourth great-grandfather, which means he's my great-great-great-great-grandfather. Um, and that's kind of the family I'm working on right now, and I can show you what I have of his ancestry going back. I don't have a ton. Oh, what's going on there? Um the line doesn't go back real particularly far on that family at the moment. It gets pretty tricky to find information. But his father was Joseph, uh, and his grandfather was also Joseph. And they were all from that area right outside of Birmingham in England. And uh, then on his mother's side, Morris, Knock is a name that I just recently discovered and I've been working on. Um, so I don't have a ton on them right now. Uh, but... Uh, this family's pretty interesting, the Betts side, um, because my fifth great grandfather, so that'd be great, 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 great. Sometimes, like on TV shows, like um, Who Do You Think You Are, they say five times great grandfather means the same thing. Um, oldest known relative, uh, I mean, we're going back past Charlemagne, but a lot of people are descended from Charlemagne, so. Um, but, um,. So George Betts is pretty cool because this guy was a gun manufacturer, which means there's a good chance he was making guns that were used by the British Army fighting against Napoleon. Um, so I'm trying to find more about that. I haven't been able to find a whole lot. Uh, and how do I know he was a gun maker? Well, it's interesting because his son Enoch, uh, who's this guy right here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of his story. My fourth great-granduncle, born in 1807, when he got married... Uh, he listed his father as a gun maker. That you, you often listed your father's occupation. And so he listed his father as a gun maker. Do I think Birmingham's a dump? I've never been there, so I can't say. Um, 
Why do they make a family or why do they make a channel about history? Because history is what I'm passionate about. It's what I love. It's what I know a lot. Um, yeah, f spelling is a nightmare because uh, a lot of these people didn't know how to read or write. Uh, and so you have to you like there's something called a sound dex, which basically will search anything that sounds like that name. So what does that mean? Well, bets could be spelled B-E-T-S, B-E-T-T-E-S, B-E-T-T-S. All the same, same name, sounds the same, spelled differently. I have the Ohio Senate debate recorded. I haven't watched it yet. Um, so uh, Enoch Betts is kind of cool. This is the brother of my third great-grandfather because he was on a prison hulk. Uh, he was on the ship called the Leviathan. So check this out. This is the Prison Hulk Registers. Uh, back then, they didn't have jails the way we have jails today or prisons. A lot of times they put them on Prison Hulks, which basically was a ship where they stripped all the ship stuff off of it, like the sails and the masts and all that stuff like that. And it was just basically the hull of the ship. And they turned it into a prison. And he was on one of these called the Leviathan. And this is the register from 1837 to 1844. Uh, and let's see here. Um, so you can see, let's look for Enoch Betts. There he is right there. And you see it's spelled E-N-O-C-K. Again, spelling means nothing, so keep that in mind. He's 37 years old. He is on the prison hulk for stealing a tablecloth. That was why he went to prison. He stole a tablecloth. Uh, he's from Birmingham, it says right there. He was convicted in Birmingham uh, when? Uh, on the 30th of June, 1843. And what was his sentence for stealing a tablecloth? Seven years. My man got seven years in prison, and not like in a comfortable prison, on a prison hulk, which is horrible conditions. Seven years for stealing a tablecloth. Now, it says here, married or single, can he read or write? It says he is married. He's got four children. He is not able to read or write. He is a stamper. The whole family, the Greenhill family, worked in like the, the trade of like gilt jewelry and gilt toys where they would stamp things and they would use like things made out of metal, like trinkets and stuff like that. Um, and it says that he was convicted before. So this was not his first offense. Um, and it says here that he was transferred to Sterling Castle on the 31st of October, 1844. My man got taken to Sterling Castle in Scotland uh, in October of 1844 to continue his sentence. So see how much information on this one document I can learn about this guy. I know... How long he was convicted uh, for? I know I know where he was living when he was convicted. When he was convicted, I know he's got a wife and four kids. I know what he did for a living. All from one document. Yeah. So um, who will I vote for? I'm not going to talk about that. Sorry. Um, I don't think it was necessarily because the tablecloth was valuable. I think they were just really super tough on crime back then. Ancestry, how much does it cost? I want to say it's like $20 a month for the world. Well, and maybe $30 a month. Uh, it's cheaper if you pay like six months at a time, which is what I do. Um, but to get the world documents, like so, like stuff in England, you know, if I just get US documents, it's cheaper. But if I get access to all the documents, it's, it's a lot more. Uh, what is the war you find most interesting to research? Civil War, US Civil War for me. Uh, I will be getting back to the Epic History Napoleon series soon, yes. Confederate uh, so, uh, soldier veterans on ancestry. Um, there's a lot there. I think Fold 3 is the best place for researching those, though. Uh, yes, I've seen your message about the BuzzFeed Unsolved videos many times. Uh, I'll look into it. You have to pay to get to know yourself. That's right. Um, so that's what, kind of what I'm showing you here is how to go about researching um, you know, when you first start out, it's a lot easier. Uh, I'll give you, a, maybe find some examples of that here. So, uh, for example, so I was talking about the Whitaker family. So, um, let's talk about my third great grandfather. His name's Joseph Whitaker. Again, spelling, 
there's about six different ways you could spell Whitaker. So you have to look for all of them. You can't just stick to one spelling or another. Find a grave is very useful because a lot of people put biographical information on find a grave. So it's very helpful if you can find it. A lot of people like my ancestors in, in Kentucky, uh, a lot of them just don't have marked graves. So a lot of them aren't going to show up on find a grave. Uh, no relation to Roger Whitaker, the singer that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not a history teacher, unless you count YouTube. There were a few Florida regiments in the Civil War, not many. Any unusual modes of dying on your tree? Uh, not real crazy unusual. Um, my wife had a great-great-great-grandfather who died from a tree falling on him. Um, I can't think of anything real super crazy beyond that. Um, so, Joseph Whitaker is my third great-grandfather. My closest immigrant ancestor. Came over in 1866. So, um, let's say I know... So, on his tombstone... Uh, I don't know if I have the picture of it on here or not. I do. So, here's the picture of his tombstone. When I first started researching him, this tombstone is like five miles from my house. Um, so... There it is. It's kind of hard to see, but it says born September 1844, which is wrong, by the way. But I didn't know that yet. Died March 13th, 1904. Uh, Elvira Whitaker Collins is his wife. Uh, so doing research then, one thing I can get into is newspaper articles. So I know he died March 13th, 1904. So I can go to the library. Now a lot of these are online, but I can look up his obituary in the library, which I did. So here's his obituary. Joseph Whitaker, one of the best-known iron workers of Niles and a man after President Roosevelt's heart. Remember, this is when Theodore Roosevelt's president, being the father of 18 children, died at 1 o'clock Sunday morning after lingering illness. He was born in England, was 56 years of age, coming to Niles when a small boy. Also not true. He was in his 20s when he came to Niles, where he spent the greater part of his life. And he didn't actually come right to Niles. He went to Cleveland first. So... All of this information, it's kind of helpful, but a lot of it's also wrong because this is being written by people who don't have firsthand knowledge. They're just going off of what they remember, what they've been told, what dad maybe talked about. None of this, okay, he didn't have 18 children. He had 16 children. He wasn't 56. He was actually 59 or 60. He grew up in Scotland and came to Cleveland as a 22-year-old, then came to Niles when he was close to 30. Uh, he was employed as a godmill ro roller for many years. Leaves a wife and 10 children to mourn their loss. Uh, he actually leaves a wife and 13 children when he died. Uh, so most of that is wrong. Uh, but that's just kind of what happens with a lot of this stuff. Um but yeah, 16 kids. And I here's what's cool. I know all 16 of them. Uh, I've got photos of most of them. In fact, I um, actually got a photo of all of the living children at a family reunion that I uh, ended up finding at one point. I don't know if I have it on here, though. Um, but I actually descend from his eldest son, Edward, who's right here. And uh, so, but here's the thing. So I start researching Joseph, right? Uh, I find out pretty soon that he comes from the Birmingham area. There's another Whitaker living in the same town named Alfred Whitaker, right? And for years I'm doing research and I suspect that Alfred and Joseph are probably related, but there's a problem. Joseph's born in England. Alfred was born in Glasgow, Scotland. So I'm thinking, okay, they live really close. They live in the same neighborhood. They have the same last name. They immigrated the same year. But one's from Scotland and one's from England, so they can't possibly be related. But as I dig further, I come to find out that that's because Joseph was born in England before the, man, the family moved to Scotland, and then from Scotland came to the U.S. So that explains why his younger brother is born in Scotland. So... Um, Helpful things in finding Joseph. So I know he died in 1904, so I go to the 1900 census, right? So the census records are all available online. So now I can look at the 1900 census for Niles City, Trumbull County, Ohio, which is where I know he lived all his uh, life after he got married. Ryan, thank you for that. 
Um, finding out if your ancestor was related to General Howe from the Revolution. His name was Bezalel Howe, last commander of Washington's lifeguard. You would have to trace back Bezalel's family, see if you can go back a few generations on his male line, and then go back on General Howe's line and see if there's a connection there. That's the easiest way to do that. Do I think Florida is crazy? Um, I think the people who go to Florida are crazy. So here, um, here's Joseph Whitaker right here. So what can I learn from Joseph about Joseph in the census here? So first of all, I can learn, according to this, he was born in May 1839. Now, what did this tombstone say? He was born in September 1844. Both of those are wrong. He was actually born in May of 1842. So he was born in May. Um, so this says he was 61. It says he's been married for 30 years, which is pretty close to accurate. He was married in 1871. Uh, it says that his wife, Elvira, was born in August of 1856, which, which is correct. So she's 18 years younger than him, according to this. She's got 14 children she's given birth to. 11 are still living, and that's true. And the three that died all died in the span of nine months uh, in 1894-95. This tells me he was born in England. His parents were born in England. She was born in Pennsylvania. Her parents were born in Pennsylvania. Uh, he was. It says here he immigrated in 1865, which is close. He came in 1866. Uh, and it says here that he's employed making faggots. Now, before you get any crazy ideas, that word does not mean what it means as a slang term today. Um, Elvira, yes. Elvira. My heart's on fire for Elvira. Um, so what that means is that he was working in a steel mill, and his job was to bundle iron rods together. Uh, they were making basically iron rods for like rebar. And his job at that point, he's in his 60s now, so he's, he's much too old to be a puddler like he was in, the, in his early days. Um, so now he's bundling the rods that they're making and you know getting them ready for shipment. That's his job. This tells me here uh, that yes, he can read, no, he can't write, and yes, he speaks English, uh, he owns his own home, uh, he is, uh, it's a mortgaged home, so he doesn't own it free and clear, uh, and it's a house, it's not a farm. So there, that tells you a ton just in that one record, right? So, um, and this lists all of his children that are living with him at this point. Yes, very often you can get, you can go to a local library and they will have um, memberships to Ancestry so you don't have to pay for it to use it at home. Or if you have your library card, sometimes you can even access it from home through the library's website. Every library is different in that way. Uh, which of the now deceased presidents do I think would have been the best president for 2022? I feel like we could really use... Um, Right about now, we could use like a, a Theodore Roosevelt. Do I think World War II Germany could have won if Hitler wasn't so cocky? Not once they invaded the Soviet Union. As soon as they invaded the Soviet Union, their, their fate was sealed no matter who was in charge. Um, I'm not related to any Eli's or Campbell's. In fact, Campbell's kind of a dirty word in my family because I'm descended from the McDonald's and those clans historically hate each other. Um, haven't been to all the U.S. states yet. Utah and Rhode Island I haven't been to yet. I have seen House of the Dragon. Um, so, yeah, census records do often have borders listed. So, now let's go back to the 1880 census. 1890 census for the U.S. was almost completely destroyed in a fire. The census is every 10 years, but we don't have an 1890 census available. So, we have to go back to 1880. Uh, to find another one. So here again, uh, Niles, Trumbull County, Ohio. There's Joseph Whitaker again. Now we have his his wife listed as Elva. Now this time he's listed as 38 years old. Now we're getting closer to the right age. And here's a helpful tip if you go through census records. If you see things like this where it seems like every record has a discrepancy when it comes to the age... Go by the earliest record. The closer you get to when they were born or to the event, 
the more accurate it's likely to be. So when he's in 1910 or 1900 saying he's 61, but in, in 1880, he's saying it's 38. To me, the 38 means he was probably more likely 58 in the 1900 census. And that's accurate because he was born in May 1842. So he's, he's right around 38. This census is from, um, I think, June 12th. Yeah, the 12th day of June, 1880. So he's just turned 38. So that is the accurate birthday er, age for him at this point. Wyatt, thank you for that. You're going to see it in the theater in a couple of hours. Is it out in theaters where you are? Because I'm waiting for it for Netflix at the end of the month. Awesome. Mussolini, the man who destroyed democracy. I'll have to check that out. Um, so here we go. Children. Anne, seven years old. Daughter. Eddie, that's my great-great-grandfather. He's five years old. Son. Selena, four years old. She's a daughter. And then Joseph, two years old, son. So right now they've got four kids. He's working in a mill. Says born in England, parents born in England. She says, Elvira does, she was born in Ohio. Not correct. She's born in Pennsylvania, Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Uh, so again, these are all things that, you know, you don't always necessarily get the most accurate inf information. You have to gather all the information you can and then try to decipher what's accurate. Don't just assume because it's printed, it's in a record, that it's absolutely true. Any musical figures get musical like Hamilton? Well, uh, Henry VIII's wives got one. I can show you my DNA results, yeah. Um, she didn't want to claim Pennsylvania. Um, I don't really know why she put Ohio there. She grew up in Ohio. She was like two years old when she moved to Ohio. So Ohio is the only home she's ever known. Um and actually, here's what's kind of cool. This is her her mother right next door here. Um, Anne Granger is her mother. Benjamin Granger is her stepfather. Uh, and they also, Benjamin came from Birmingham. So he comes from the same place that Joseph Whitaker comes from, same general area. So Nellie, Benjamin, Charles, Alice, and William are all Elvira's younger half siblings uh, living right next door. And then James Nyman is Elvira's full brother, living on the other side. So they're both James and Elvira are living on either side of their mother, Anne. Uh, and of course, so that's another thing that's really important when you're looking at these records, look at who's living nearby. Because there's a good chance that the people living nearby in these early records are related in some way. Um, same thing with burials. When you go to cemeteries, cemeteries, look at who's buried near them. Sometimes those are gonna be family uh, members. Yes, the, the presidents I'm closely most closely related to are Obama and George W. Bush. How do you know which information is the most accurate? I say closest to the source, right? Um, so if I have a tombstone that says somebody's born in 1858, but I find a birth record that says they were born in 1857, I'm going with the birth record, not the tombstone. Because the tombstone was carved by somebody when that person died many years later, the birth record was written very close to when the event actually happened. It's the same thing with history in general. The closer you are to when something happened, the more accurate the information is likely to be. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're just looking at some documents about uh, Joseph Whitaker here. Now, let's go to the Scottish census. So. Um, this is from Scotland, and now we can't actually look at this uh, record unless we go over to Find My Past, which I have a membership for. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Let's go over to Find My... No, not Find a Grave. Find My Past. Find My Past uh, is a great source for British records. Let me move it over here for a second while I log in. Okay, so that's loading up here. Um, one of your friends is a legitimate descendant from Kaiser Wilhelm II. Very cool. Um, I have a, an uncle by marriage who's descended from the Brandenburg family. So he's descended from the, 
German royal family. Jason, how's it going? All right, so here, let's click on Edward Whitaker for a second. We'll go to Joseph, and we'll look now at the 1861 census. Oh, I don't know why it's not showing up here. Here we go. Uh, Ancestries, I think the best. Fold3.com is great for military records. Um, FamilySearch.org is a free site, but it's much more difficult to navigate. Um, all right, so let's see if we can actually look at the document here. Because right now it's just showing us the index, but this works. I can show it to you this way because uh, it's all indexed. So here's Joseph, unmarried. He's Now his birth date here shows as 1844, which we know is not right because I, I actually have his baptism record from 1842. Um, but it shows him as a son, unmarried, in the family of Richard and Mary Whitaker. Now here is that brother, Alfred, that I showed you earlier, who was born around 1857. Uh, who we saw later on, who came to Niles also. His father, Richard, is a malleable iron puddler. Um, he's born in 1819 in England. He was actually born in Tipton, outside of Birmingham. Uh, he's married to Mary. Her maiden name is Lambert. Um, and her father was Welsh. Uh, he, was, he was from Wales. Um, and then you see Richard, Joseph, and Selina were born in England. Then, starting with John, they're born in Glasgow, or in and around Glasgow. Uh, John, Elizabeth, Alfred, and Edward are all born in and around Glasgow. So we know from that that between 1845, when Selina was born, and when John was born in 1849, the family moved from England to Scotland. Uh, so that tells me, again, I'm learning information that helps me narrow down their story. I know Richard and Mary moved to Glasgow, Scotland in the last half of the 1840s. So all of that is helpful information and in knowing where to look for records. So then I go, I can go back then if I want to, um, to the 1850 census. And uh, what's cool about this is I can actually, based on their birth records and things, follow them around. And I know that for a while they live in Govan, uh, over here on the south side, which is where rangers play, uh, right in this area here, Govan. But then eventually they move over to the east side uh, to an area called Coatbridge. Uh, and they end up living out here in Coatbridge before they come to America. NJTE, thank you. Do I think Japan could have stalemated the U.S. in World War II? Ah, wow. I don't know if the U.S. would have gone for that. Um, nah, I don't think, I don't think so. I uh, will do a nation ranking for World War II like I did with World War I. Yes, absolutely. Were any of my ancestors involved in uh, any wars other than the Wars of Roses? Yeah, um, I had an ancestor who was a general in the English Civil War. Let me show you that guy for a second here. I'll show you one of my most interesting ancestors. Oh, he's Edward. Oh. All right, here he is right here. So Edward Whaley, Wally, 11th great-grandfather. He was a, a major general during the English Civil War. He's one of the regicides. He's one of the people who signed the death warrant of Charles I and was hunted afterwards by Charles' son and ended up coming to America and hiding in a cave outside of New Haven, Connecticut. I got to visit the cave where that happened. Uh, and Edward, he, um, his mother was Frances Cromwell, uh, who is, I think, the, the aunt of Oliver Cromwell. Um, Greg, thank you for that. Fellow Northeast Ohio guy, where at Northeast Ohio? Six pains. You tried researching your family tree, but you get stuck fast because your family has a lot of really common names. Oh, that, that does make it hard. My wife has a great-great-grandfather named John Smith, so I feel your pain. Um, 
that gets really tricky. Um, you just have to dig deeper in the records. Look at newspaper records. Look for obituaries. Those are really helpful for stuff like that. Um, he did fight alongside Cromwell. <clears throat> Where was he from in England? Uh, I actually don't know that. He was married in Nottingham, uh, Flintham, 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 Flintham in Nottingham. Um, ends up having a son born in Maryland in 18, in 1647, which I don't think is actually accurate. Uh, I'm going to change that because I'm almost positive that's got to be England. He wasn't in Maryland yet. Um, right there. Here you ha have the actual death warrant for Charles. And Edward's signature is on this. In fact, I think I remember where it is. Oh, it's right here. Bottom left, right under Oliver Cromwell. His signature is right below Cromwell's. So that's a pretty cool ancestor that I've got. Cameron, thank you for that. Related to Donald Smith, a Canadian historical figure whose famous Canadian photo called The Last Spike. Oh, the Canadian Pacific Railway. Very cool. Um, all right. A genie Vlogger, what is going on, dude? I'm going to meet you in a couple of weeks. Can't wait. Excited for that. Do I have any connections to Sheffield? I'm not sure if I do. Uh, so somebody's asking about getting the furthest back. There's a lot of these lines that I have that go back far, but you got to take it all with a grain of salt because the records get really difficult to prove when you start getting back really far. Um, so a lot of these are like, we think this is who it is, but you, you know, if I were to go to court with it, I'd never be able to prove it, right? Um, but yeah, like Catherine Cromwell, for example, that's you know that's a kind of a fun line. There's some Welsh there. Um, Lord Mayor Ralph Warren. That Warren line is one of the royal lines. That's going to go back to some of the members of royalty. The uh, de Warren family goes back to the Plantagenets. Um, my most battle-hardened Civil War ancestor. Sure, I'll show you him. Uh, it's on that same Whitaker line. Uh, and it would have to be one of a couple of folks here. Sam Hughes is the one you hear me talk all about uh, because he was in the 20th Ohio. He was, as you can see here, born in 1810, lied about his age because the maximum age for serving in the Civil, Civil War was 45 as an enlisted soldier. Uh, and he is 51 when he enlists in the 20th Ohio, serves three years with the 20th Ohio, marches all over the South. He's at Shiloh. He's at Fort Donaldson. He's at Vicksburg. Uh, you know, and involved in some of these really contested fights. His son, William, uh, is a drummer in that same company with him. Uh, so it got to be him or I had one guy who was with the Army of the Potomac for the entire four years of the war. Uh, and that is right here, Dan Servey. He's a sergeant in the 4th PA Cavalry. Served as a uh, courier to generals. So he was a courier for General McCall for a while. He was a courier for General Reynolds for a while. Uh, knew those guys. And he's there um, all the way from 1861, when the war began, all the way until the uh, they're mustered out in June of 65. Do I prefer pancakes or waffles? Ooh, that's tough. I think probably waffles. Stoke-on-Trent, yes. I do have some Stoke-on-Trent ancestry. Uh, in that Whitaker line, I've got some Stoke-on-Trent. Um, and actually... Um, off the top of my head, I can tell you that on my Whitaker line, there's a line, the last name is Stone, that I haven't researched real well yet. I haven't found a lot. Um, where is it? Right here. Uh, she was born in Weston on Trent in Derbyshire. Uh, so kind of a little further east from there. But um, I did talk some about Dan Servey's story in a video. I did. Um, I don't think I have any in Wigan. So somebody asked me to mention my uh, any roots to political person or even royalty in any former European nation. Um, well, definitely for sure British royal royalty. But then again, you know what? Anybody with deep roots in England is going to have descent probably from Edward III like I do. Uh, so that is not a unique thing. My closest royal ancestor is James IV of Scotland right here. Um, who is my 15th great-grandfather. 
My Heritage is great. They've got a lot of really good newspaper records on their site. Genie Vlogger. Um, no, I need to connect in there. I should definitely do that. Um, so somebody asked about seeing my DNA. So let's let's talk about my DNA for a second. Cool thing, by the way, um, Ancestry just added a new feature where you can divide your, G your DNA matches by paternal and maternal line. So here's my DNA, um, estimated, at least according to Ancestry. And it says 63% England and Northwest Europe. So that's basically this area right in here. That's about two-thirds of my DNA kind of matches that region. Um, then beyond that, next is 18% Scotland. And I'll talk about why you have to kind of, again, take all of this with a grain of salt too. And definitely, if you guys want to learn a ton more about genealogy, you see Genia Vlogger in the chat. His whole channel is dedicated to that stuff. I've watched a bunch of his videos, and it's fantastic stuff. As someone who's been doing genealogy for 30 years, I can tell you he knows what he's talking about. Definitely check him out. Um, are DNA tests protected as in privacy? Yes and no. Um, if you upload your if you, DNA to places like Ancestry, people can see if you're a match and that has been used to help nail some criminals. Um, but you can privatize your tree if you want to. Um, okay, beyond that, Sweden and Denmark, 9%. And again, keep in mind with some of these. Like, for example, I know I have Swedish ancestors, so this doesn't surprise me. But it's also possible when you match Scandinavia that it could just be that you have Scottish and maybe like Yorkshire ancestors because that is also going to be Scandinavian DNA in some cases. Um, so there's 9% there, uh, Ireland 4%. And I'll tell you again, why that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. And I'll show you why in a few minutes, I do have some Viking in me. Yes. Nigeria 2%. Uh, and I'll show you exactly where that comes from in a minute. Um, then we've got Wales at 2%. Which is interesting because I have pretty close Welsh ancestry, but I just didn't inherit that much. Because here's the thing, and this is what I mean. Just because I'm showing 2% Welsh ancestry does not mean that only 2% of my ancestors came from Wales. It just means that only 2% of the DNA that I inherited and my parents inherited and my grandparents inherited came down. So my wife and I passed down equal amounts of, of DNA to our kids. So each of our kids are exactly 50% of me and 50% of my wife. But that does not mean that they got exactly 25% of each of my parents' DNA. They might have got 75% of my mom's DNA and only 25% of my dad's DNA. And then the next one of my children might have got two-thirds of my dad's DNA and one-third of my mom's, which is why they look different, why they might have different colored hair and different features, and why they might... I could test my children, and they could show differently on the ethnicity estimate, even though they have the exact same parents. They just might inherit different parts of the DNA. So my wife, her mother is 50% Hungarian. But that doesn't mean that my wife inherited exactly 25% Hungarian DNA. She actually got less than that because she apparently got more of her father's DNA than her, um, her, her grandfather's DNA than her grandmother's DNA and those kinds of things. So it's complicated, but that's basically what it means. Alex, thank you for that. I definitely want to come to Berlin. That's high on my list of places I would like to visit. Um, so Ivory Coast and Ghana, 1%, Cameroon, Congo, Western Bantu peoples, 1%. Now, let me show you, for example. So now you can break that down further. Uh, and Ancestry does something really cool where it actually can estimate what percent you got from what parent based on your matches. So this is a really cool feature that I like. Um, let me show you to uh, show you that here. Um, here we go. So um, here's the estimate. So it estimates then that of the 63% of my DNA that comes from England and West, Northwestern Europe, 36% of my DNA comes from my maternal 
English roots. 27% of my DNA comes from my paternal English roots. Most of my Scottish ancestry comes through my father, not through my mother. Equal amount, Sweden and Denmark through mother and father. All of my Irish ancestry is coming through my mother. And all of my Nigerian ancestry is coming through my father. So that breaks it down a little further. But now here, check this out. I only inherited 2% Nigerian DNA from my father, 27% England, Northwestern Europe, stuff like that. But let me show you my dad's sister's DNA uh, report because her breakdown is very different than mine. And this is what I mean because she might have inherited completely different DNA than my father did from their parents. Now you're going to see here, she doesn't really get she doesn't get any of that like Southern Africa at all that I got from her brother, but she does have 5% Nigeria and 3% Mali. So she's got 8% total from those two. Why does she have more? She's one generation closer to our African ancestor than I am. So she has more of that than I do. I haven't been to Salt Lake City yet. No, but I want to go. Um, DNA test has been huge for me. I only know who my father is because of my ancestry DNA test. Uh, I will show you Jeannie of Olger in just a minute where my African percentage ties in. Um, and then you can see all my other fathers. So let's talk about my father's, uh, my slave ancestor, okay? Because um, I actually know exactly who she is. And she is right... Actually, she's over here. So, all right, so here's my great-grandmother. Here's the first clue that I had to this. <clears throat> 1910 census. This is my great-grandmother, right? So one-eighth of my family tree to that point. You have eight great-grandparents. So about 12% of my DNA, in theory, would come from her. Nada is her name. She's just over a year old. She's living in Carter County, Kentucky. Uh, and what I want to show you is right here. Race, M-U. What does that mean? Mulatto. That means she's mixed race. She's part black and part white. Now, first question is, who is she inheriting that through? Well, the answer is right there too. Her mother is also listed as mulatto. So I know her mother, my great-great-grandmother, Mary, is also of mixed race. Now, interestingly enough, Nada in later census records gets listed as white. She's not listed as mulatto. But in this census record, the first one after she's born, she gets reported as mulatto. So now I know that's the line, right? Uh, so let's look at her family tree for a second. And I know exactly where it is. So this is her mother who was listed as mulatto in the census. My great-great-grandmother. I don't have a lot of photos of her, but I do have this one. Uh, and you can kind of get a little sense of it there. You know, she's got very dark complexion, little bit of the African showing up in her features. It's pretty cool to see that um, a little bit. How do you deal with adoptions? Adoptions are so tough because the records are so hard to come by. That's why I love DNA because it helps with a lot of that. Jack, thank you for that. But I will tell you this. I've always pronounced it Wally. But when you go to Connecticut where he settled, they pronounce it Whaley. So at some point when it came from England over to uh, New, Eng New England, they changed it. But I've always pronounced it Wally. The reason I said Whaley is because somebody corrected me when I was there. So, yeah. Um, am I good at basketball? I haven't played for a few years, but I was pretty good for my age the last I was playing. Yeah, I'm decent at basketball. I'm a pretty good passer, decent three-point shooter. Um all right, so this is my great-great-grandmother. Okay, so let me show you. This has been such a tough line for me to research. But here's Cheney Cottle, my fourth great-grandmother. So she's my great-great-great-great-grandmother. She was born into slavery in 1835. Her father was Reverend Benjamin Cottle. He was a white slave owner. So she is half and half, right? Her mother was a slave. We don't know her mother's name. We just know she's some unknown slave. 
and her father was Reverend Benjamin Cottle. So I have a bunch of DNA matches through the Cottle line as well. Um, so she has a bunch of children, Cheney does. And we don't know the fathers of any of them. Probably some of them were, slate, were owners. 1850, 1852, 1856. So her daughter, Margaret, who's my great-great-great-grandmother, is born in 1856 to an unknown father and then Cheney Cottle. Uh, so then my great-great-great-grandmother is also born into slavery in 1856. So I can look at them in the, in the 1870 census. So here's my fourth great-grandmother and uh, Peggy and Mary uh, listed right there. So Peggy is actually um, my, that's Margaret. That's my third great-grandmother. And you can see there's no father, no husband listed there. And they're listed as black on the census, but they're living amongst a bunch of white people. There's no other black people, at least living in their immediate neighborhood, living in McGoffin County, Kentucky. This, uh, this tree is completely my tree that I've built on ancestry and in, in Lancashire, the name's very common, Jack. Very cool. Good to know that likely that's where he came from then. Um, yeah, we'll do some ancient Greek uh, ancestry. Weight loss regime is going so, so far so good. I've lost five pounds in two weeks. Uh, I do have a little bit of Native American. It doesn't really show up in the DNA, though, but I know I have it in my ancestry. Um, yeah, so Cheney Cottle, uh, and the last record we have of her uh, is in the 1900 census before she kind of disappears. Uh, and she's listed here. Um as the grandmother in this family with her granddaughter, Bertha. And look at this. These are all women. You've got Bertha Cottle, her daughter, her son. Uh, well, all women adults, I should say. Her daughter, her mother, her sister, her grandmother, sister, and niece. All these women with this one young son who's six years old. No fathers in the picture whatsoever. Uh, now, what's cool about this, too, is I actually... I can find them in the census, the slave census, which is this really fascinating document uh, that you can look at for people who are um, of African ancestry who lived in the South. Um, I did not attach the slave census, but let me go ahead for a second uh, and go to Abigail Pennington, who would have been the owner of Cheney Cottle at this time. Here's the, let me see if I can find the slave census. Because they're listed separately. They're not listed on the standard U.S. census. And I'll show you how they're listed because this is pretty fascinating stuff, really. Um, let's go to 1860. Let's try and find the... Let me try to, let me go back and see if I can narrow this down just to U.S. records for a second. And apologies if I'm not seeing your chats. We will definitely get to those. I'm going to go to uh, just narrow it down to Kentucky. Yeah, that didn't help at all. All right, let's go back for a second. I definitely want to show you guys these the slave uh, slave schedules or the slave census because it's really helpful information and in trying to narrow down some of this stuff. There it is. Okay. Here she is right here, Abigail Cottle. So what it does is it shows the owner and then it shows the number of enslaved people owned by that person. And in this case, by the way, Samuel May, this is kind of cool because uh, that family ends up being um, high-ranking officers in the Confederate Army. Greg, thank you for that. So here's Abigail Cottle. So who does she own? She owns a 28-year-old black female. Well, Cheney's born 1835-ish. So she's 26 probably at this point. So that's probably her. 
Then we've got a 10-year-old and 8-year-old sons or males, a 6-year-old female, a 4-year-old and a 1-year-old male. Now, the odds are very 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 strong in this case that all of these children are Cheney's children. So this is Cheney and then these are her kids. So 6-year-old female, that's my third great-grandmother because we know she was born around 1856, right? So good chance this is probably her right there. So now I see my third great grandmother and my fourth great grandmother listed simply by an age and a gender and a color in the records. So um, oldest ancestor I was able to trace with any degree of certainty, you're looking at probably some of those royal lines back to like about a thousand years ago. How can you own someone? I mean, it was a big part of most of world history, not unique to the U.S. or the British Empire. Uh, Addison, I'm doing great. How about yourself? How's my book coming along? I haven't had a chance to work on it a whole lot lately. Uh, I've got so many irons in the fire uh, because I, you know, I'm also working on this podcast and I've got a bunch of episodes of the podcast that I'm trying to get ready. Uh, I've got another potential opportunity in terms of history that I can't really mention yet. Um, another partnership that might be coming very, very soon. Um, so uh, more about that coming soon. And also, uh, you, you guys have seen Genie of Logger in here, and you might have heard me mention that I'm going to be meeting him in a few weeks. Uh, I'm going to be meeting a bunch of people in a few weeks. Big collab happening. I don't want to give details, um, but there is going to be an opportunity to meet us at some point, but we're not announcing that yet when and where that's happening. Uh, but I'm going to be a big par uh, part of a weekend away for a bunch of educational YouTubers. Uh, Genie of Vlogger is going to be there. Mr. Beat's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Um, Drew Dernal is going to be there. Uh, Drawn of History is going to be there. Who else is going to be there? There's a bunch of other channels that are going to be there. There's like, I think, 12 of us YouTubers all together. Um, but those are some of the ones that I know for sure are going to be there for that. So... A history making conference yes we're all connecting hopefully some some great collabs will come out of that uh, useful charts matt's not going to be there from useful charts country balls are very entertaining more african history on this channel yes i would probably i would like to do that mr terry will not be there no um so yeah so there's a little bit of my african dna so let me go back now to the dna um, because I want to show you, so then what's cool is I've had the opportunity to have my maternal grandparents' DNA done. So that gets me back two more generations. It gets the information to be that much more accurate. So you remember, I only inherited 3% Scottish DNA, or 2%, through my mother. But if you go back to her mother, her mother's 23% Scottish, right? So in theory... I should have inherited half of that. So I should have inherited something like 12% of that. Um, well, it would be 6% because you break it down again. Um, but no, I only got... So I got a small sliver of my grandmother's Scottish DNA. Um, and then when you figure that her father, my, my mother's father, also has 17% Scottish... I should have inherited more Scottish DNA from my mother than I did. So that's just how the DNA thing works sometimes. Oh, cynical historian, casual historian, and knowing better will be there. Thank you, Genie Vlogger. How could I forget Cypher? Good day for the baggies indeed, Ed. Yes, it was. I watched that game this morning. Joe Codwell, thank you for that. Uh, what was the law in slave states regarding mixed children of slaves and their owners? Were they born? No, they were born as slaves. I believe the standard in the South, at least post-war, was one-eighth. If you were one-eighth black, which means if you had one great-grandparent who was black, you were still considered to be black. Um, but yeah, you, they were pretty much born into slavery. Um Wilson, yes. I, some video is going to have to be made between me and Cynical, Cynical Historian, even if we just do a short, just briefly talking about our, our disdain for Woodrow Wilson. We'll have to do something. Did I mention earlier video I'm descending? Yes, my great-grandmother. Actually, that's my, my grandpa here. 
This is his DNA we're looking at, and that's the German you see. Um, he only has 4% that he inherited, but his mother is the Gearhart. Yeah, Gearhart, Gayhart. Uh, right here is my great grandmother. I knew my great grandmother, Leota Gearhart. Wonderful lady, sweet lady. Uh, just I, I adored her. She was I was five years old when she died. How long have I been streaming? Um, this stream's been going for uh, almost an hour. We're gonna wrap it up probably in about 15, 20 minutes or so. Parts of France were circled when you selected Scotland because some of that DNA is linked. Um, it's kind of like the same thing. Like if you have Yorkshire ancestry in, D in England, there's a good chance you also have Scandinavian ancestry because so much of Yorkshire is Viking. In fact, York, that name comes from the Viking word, Jorvik. I am definitely planning on playing Victoria 3 when it comes out. Uh, yeah, so here's my Gearheart line, right? Um, going back, it goes back to, um, I believe, yeah, Peter Gearhart right here. He is my sixth great grandfather. He was the immigrant ancestor from Germany. Me and Cypher need to have a Wilson hate day. Yes. As someone from Princeton, Princeton not only gets to boast Woodrow Wilson, you also get Aaron Burr as well. So congratulations on that. Thoughts on the Stuart curse? Well, the Stuarts, I mean, there was something wrong there. Well, I prefer being born at the peak of Spanish flu. Being born in Poland is Jewish. Oh, easily Spanish flu because your survival odds during the peak of Spanish flu are much, much better than being born in Poland as a Jew in the 1940s. I'm decent on German ancestry. Peter did not make it to Ohio. Peter made it to Virginia. My Gearhart ancestors come from Kentucky. Uh, so here, his son died in Floyd County, Kentucky. His son was born in Washington County, Virginia. Died in Floyd County, Kentucky in 1833. Did any of my family serve in World War II? Yes. Uh, closest relative in World War II was my great uncle. Several great uncles, in fact. Um, so my grandma, who's still living, her brother... Ralph, right here. Um, he was a rifleman in the 254th Infantry Regiment. Um, right here. So, um, yeah, here you go. I entered the U.S. Army. He spent three months as an infantry private, 12 months as a PFC rifleman with the 254th Infantry, Company L and then Company M, uh, and then seven months, and this was in peacetime, uh, seven months in the 17th Cavalry Recon in Germany as a Tech 5 truck driver. That was the peacetime. That was the occupation army. Time of history, would I most want to be president? Reconstruction so I could get right what they screwed up as best I could. Not related to what the stream is about. Uh, Discord servers being shut down because we just can't moderate it effectively enough to keep it going. Uh, I just don't have the time, and it's not fair to put all of it on the mods who just take nothing but grief from a lot of people. I don't even have the time to really kind of help the mods uh, and, and all those kinds of things. It just, it's just it's not worth it when there's so many other avenues uh, for this community besides that. I just, Ed, I saw that this morning, that King Charles is open to allowing the bones that are in the urn at Westminster Abbey uh, to be tested, the ones that were found under the stairs at the White Tower uh, in, I think, the 17th century. That is going to be really cool to find out. Which of my ancestors would I want to have a conversation with? Oh, so many of them. But for me, one that really stands out is, I'll show you where she is. Um, well, Cheney Cottle, the one I was just showing you about that was a, a slave... I'd uh, I would love to know more of her story because so much of it I can't find because she's not in the records. Uh, so I'm fascinated by her story. Um, I'm fascinated by this guy's story here um, because I don't know the whole story. This guy here, his name he was born Jacob Bartrug, but for some reason. He changed his name to Stills. And there was another guy named Jacob Stills that lived in that same town. And he took that guy's name. And I don't know why. Uh, and that's a long, long story. But 
who do I think killed the princes in the tower? I think it's most likely somebody on behalf of Richard. Whether or not Richard had knowledge of it ahead of time, I'm not so sure. But I think it was definitely somebody who did it for Richard. Whether or not they did it with his permission is another story. I find World War One most interesting by far out of the two World Wars. JD, what's going on? Oh, that's a great... Actually, that's a really good idea. Sam Hughes would be great so he could help me write the history. Ah, that's fantastic. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Thank you for mentioning that one to me. Any actors that are closely related to me? None that I'm aware... Oh, well, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rebecca Gayhart. Uh, she's an actress. Uh, she's descended from my Gearhart family. I'm also third cousins with the Christian music artist Rich Mullins. He's my third cousin. Killed in 1997, and uh, he was hit by uh, hit by a car. Um, one of the pioneers of contemporary Christian music. He's my third cousin through the Mullins family. Uh, June Carter Cash and I are both descended from the England family. I think June Carter Cash is like my fifth cousin. So a lot of musicians. Um, the England family is in my... Uh, where's that line? That's the Stags line right here. Uh, so John England right here is my fourth great grandfather and through him I'm cousins with June Carter Cash. Closest famous relative. Oh, that one's easy. It's a famous ancestor. And there you have it right there. Just one of four different lines I have back to Pocahontas. Um yeah, she is my I forget what it is. It's a, uh, yeah, it's 9, 10, 11, 12th great grandmother through three different lines. Lots of foreign military ancestors. Yep. I play guitar and trumpet and a little bit of piano. Favorite World War II aircraft is the Spitfire. No current plans for a California visit, but I'm sure it'll happen at some point. There is a statue of her in England. She died in England. She's buried in England. Rebecca Rolfe is her name when she died in England. But yes. Landon Hopple. How does it feel knowing thousands of people like to watch my videos? Um, I'm honored. I never expected it, but I'm very grateful for that. Um, and, and I love being able to interact with all of you. It's my favorite part of this. It's not the popularity of it. It's the interaction. And also getting to know other YouTubers. Um, you know, like getting to hang out with JD and, uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to history underground cause he's getting ready to start his Antietam series. Uh, and that goes hand in hand with the stuff I've been doing from Antietam. Um, but you know, getting to know other YouTubers and you know, I'm getting, you know, in a few weeks to go back out to Belgium, uh, something that's only possible because of the YouTube channel. Um, and I think I'm going to get to meet history chick, uh, Sarah, who's interviewed me and JD a few times. Um, some of the Band of Brothers guys are going to be there. Sander VK History is going to be there. Then I'm going to be going out to Denver and uh, hanging out with Mr. Beat and uh, Genia Vlogger and Cynical Historian and Drew Dernal and all these guys. So super excited about all of that stuff. I, I do have some Gloucestershire ancestors. My wife's a little more closely related to Gloucestershire. Her great-great-grandmother was born in... Dean, East Dean, I think it is, or West uh, Forest of Dean, somewhere around there. I think it's in Gloucestershire. Where am I going in Belgium? Ypres and Liège, primarily, and Bastogne. I'm going to try to squeeze in Waterloo if I can. Last name for this case would be Riddle. Oh, yeah, I've got Riddle, of course, in my tree. Uh, UK trip, definitely be coming back sometime next year. Don't know when yet. But for sure, I do have Viking blood um, through William the Conqueror for sure, but other places too. East Anglia, not off the top of my head, but I may. Most of my ancestry is West Midlands and the north of England. And then like Nottinghamshire. Let me show you real quick. I'll, I'll close with this one. Um, I'll show you my direct paternal line. So, um, you know, I was born to an unwed mother. So I have my mom's maiden name as my last name. But my father's last name is Snowden, so Snowden is my paternal line. And uh, my my Snowden ancestors came to America 
um, from Edwinstow in Nottinghamshire, and they came to America because they were Quakers who were being persecuted in England. In fact, one of my Quaker ancestors uh, was a preacher who was continually thrown in prison. Um, but uh, So John Snowden's my immigrant male, male line ancestor, my ninth great-grandfather, uh, came from Edwinstow, initially went to New Jersey, uh, and there's a lot of Quaker meeting records that show him here. Here's one from 1682. Look at that. How cool is this record right here? Um, but right here somewhere, uh, you're going to see there, John and Ann Snowden. These are my ninth great-grandparents' names listed on this Quaker meeting record from 1683, I think it is. Uh, so that's one of the earliest records we have for them in America. Um, so his father is William Snowden. It goes back to a town called Worksup in Nottinghamshire. John Snowden. His father's Thomas. Uh, his father's William. These records are all really sketchy at this point. Uh, and they come from Mansfield. So this is my direct paternal line. And I can go back about that far. Um, Christopher. Same name as me, so that's kind of cool. Um, born in 1520. So right here we're talking Henry VIII. He's born into Henry VIII's England. Uh, and that's about as far as I've gotten in that family. I, uh, Grace and I have not been to Kirtland, but fun fact, speaking of LDS, um, I live in Austintown, Ohio, right? And I the last church that I was on staff before the current one I'm at. I was a youth minister at a church here in Austin town that's 200 years old. One of the founding elders of the church that I was on staff at for five years here in Austin town was a guy named Sidney Rigdon. Now Sidney Rigdon is one of the fathers of the Mormon church. This guy right here. So I was on staff at a church that this guy started. And he was kind of the heir apparent to Joseph Smith when Joseph Smith died. But they passed him over and gave the presidency to um, Brigham Young instead. And so Sidney Rigdon took his ball and went home. He's like, I'm out. Uh, and he ended up starting his own sect of the Mormon church. And they've actually got a church here in Austin Town. It's called the Church of Jesus Christ of Monongahela, Pennsylvania. Uh, and he is a part of that. Um, but he was an elder at the church that I was on staff at. Uh, but he connected with the Mormons in Kirtland, which is up near Cleveland. You were born in works up. Very cool. Will I be visiting where Austria's most famous painter was shot in World War I? At some point when I can get to Berlin, I will do that. JD, who's in the chat, hey, he just got back from Austria's famous painter's um, eagle's nest, which is very cool, and I'm very jealous of that. Lee was a great general. I don't think he was as great as some people give him credit for. Do I have Mayflower ancestors? Why, yes, I do. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. I feel like I, I sound like um, Good Mythical Morning now when I say, uh, let's talk about that. Not Edward Winslow. What am I thinking? It was George Soule. He was an indentured servant to the Winslow family. Here you go. There is my Mayflower ancestor, my 12th great-grandfather, George Soul. I've actually been to that grave marker. I've got a picture of me in front of that. Uh, nearby rest, because we don't know where in that cemetery he's buried, but he's near near that point somewhere. Joe Caldwell, thank you for that. It's it's pronounced as Worktop. Okay, very good. Worktop. Worktop? Okay, good to know. Joe, uh, do I think it's possible for Germany to win World War One after April 1917 when the U.S. entered the war? Yes. They needed to, I think, start the Kaiserschlacht offensive earlier. And they needed to throw everything they had into breaking the French before they did. I feel like they waited a little too long. Rather live in the Russian Empire or the Soviet Union. Depends on who I am, right? If I'm a middle class or a wealthy person in the Russian Empire, certainly the Russian Empire. I definitely want to go to Poland at some point. 
I enjoy both. I just don't get to do streams very often. I just have a lot going on. What Battlefield has been the most impactful for me to visit? Definitely the Somme. I feel like Ypres may change that. Ask me again in three weeks. I may have a different answer. But right now it's the Somme. I've never been as emotional and overwhelmed by the weight of what happened in a place like I have been at the Somme battlefield. Um, Susie, hello, cousin. Very cool. All right, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I've been to Mentor many times. I've spoken at all the schools in Mentor. Um, but I've got to get some work done around the house, uh, and I've been streaming all afternoon. I will be doing a private stream tomorrow for members and patrons. Uh, I'll announce that later on tonight. So thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, we will see you again real soon.